Good morning. Well, good morning, afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to Adobe Live. I am your host, Jasmine Whitaker, and today I'm here with Angela Freja. Hi, everyone. Hello. From? <clears throat> I'm from Montreal, visiting here in California. Whoop, whoop. Where the weather is okay. <laughs> <laughs> the weather is beautiful compared to Montreal, which is a beautiful city. Yes, I told her all of my destinations I want to visit in Canada, and that's on the top of the list. So <laughs> let's see who's with us today. So we have Nadia, Nadia or Nadia? Not, I keep wanting to say Nadia, but I think it's Nada. Hi, nice to meet you. Hey, Cindy. Cindy says hello. Melissa. Michael, how's it going? Ariana says hello, ladies. <laughs> hello. Yes, it's in Canada. Montreal's in Canada. Justin, oh, well, we got a lot of people today. Hey. Diego, Gina, Chloe, Richard. Hi, everyone. I'm glad you guys are so excited. <laughs> so, so Taj <laughs> says, yes, InDesign. Hi, everyone. I'm so glad you're excited about InDesign. That is awesome. Hey everyone, so we are gonna have a really exciting stream today, but of course, if you've joined us before, you know we have a little bit of housekeeping to do. Um, we will have a chat and win um, later on today, and so once you see that, make sure you guys are talking to us in the chat so you can win a 100, I was gonna say $100, but 100 stickers, which is just as good. You can win 100 stickers from Sticker Mule, and we can't wait to see the designs you do with that. And then if you happen to catch Jesse on the DCCs, we have a daily creative challenge going. Um, you are creating a surreal scene um, with masking and adjustment layers. So if you haven't had a chance to um, tune into that, make sure you go to the replay and check out that DCC and submit your designs. So that would be really cool. And then make sure you check in with us tomorrow because we'll be doing portfolio reviews. Yeah, I can't wait to see what you guys send in. Yes, that is actually one of my favorite <clears throat> parts of Adobe Live. So make sure you guys tighten up your work today <laughs> and then come back tomorrow and send us your portfolios and you can do that um, on Behance at the top. So make sure you guys send those in so we can check them out. And I think that is all. For housekeeping. All the housekeeping. All the housekeeping is done. Sweep, sweep. <laughs> so, Angela, mm -hmm. tell us. Tell us why you're here, what you're doing, what we're up to today. So today we're going to be working on a recent project of mine called 10 Years of Type. So as you guys know, we just reached 2020, which is a big deal, a new decade. Yes. And I turned 30 this year. Whoop, whoop. Which marks 10 years of doing design, which is super exciting. So. This project was basically a collection of all the posters I've designed over the last 10 years. I mean, to be fair, maybe the last five years, <laughs> because some of the older stuff we don't want to show. <laughs> we want to see it. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> and I took all of these designs and I pared them down into <clears throat> really simple black and white um, typography and just really clean layouts. And we printed all these posters off. I think there was over 200 posters in total and we covered a photo studio, all the walls and on the, all the floor, and we did a really fun photo shoot there, shot by Garrett cool. Nacarado, who's a very good friend of mine and a really talented photographer. Yeah, you have photos you can show, right? Yeah, absolutely. Let's, let's see here. Hi, Jose. Hi, hi Val. <laughs> People are saying hi still. We got a full chat today, I'm excited. <laughs> so these are some behind the scenes photos. So you can see here that we've filled all the wall. We have the beautiful Vasily chair, a Bauhaus chair, which I love. Mm -hmm. um, this is Garrett and my friend Sarah. And then these are some of the behind me here. You can see this is the process of building everything. So it was an arduous procedure to fill all the floor and the walls, but it came out really great. How big is that frame of the wall, would you say? I think it's probably about 12 feet. 12 feet, that's yeah. a lot of posters. Yeah, exactly. And we printed everything in 17 by 11. Yeah, and um, you're going about like almost four to five feet on the floor too. Yeah, I that's think a it lot. was I think it was probably 10 feet high mm -hmm. and then 10 feet along the floor. That's um, amazing. Yeah, so we don't have the final shots yet, of course, but we're going to get them next week and we're going to launch it on Behance, which is really exciting. Ooh, so make sure you guys check out her Behance. Yeah. And today we're going to be turning this project into an editorial piece. So we're going to be converting all of these posters into a newspaper. 
Um, I'm really inspired by the, the politics and the news and what's going on in newspapers, or one of my favorite print mediums. So we thought we would turn these into a really creative newspaper today. Very cool. A lot of people are digging it. <laughs> yeah, Greetings thanks, from guys. Venezuela, Dave says. <clears throat> Justin says, wicked cool. <laughs> Diego says, tabloid. <laughs> Exclamation <laughs> point. <laughs> OK, so let's get started. So the newspaper format we're going to be building is the Berlin format. And this is the format that the New York Times is in. And most of the international newspapers are built in the Berlin format. Did you Google that and find that out? I did, yes. Uh, <laughs> I'm surprised they like just let that information linger yeah, in the interwebs. Yeah, it's kind of a classic historical thing, too, because newspapers have been around for so long. It's mm -hmm. one of the first print mediums ever, ever invented. Very cool. I'm going to look that up later. Yeah, it's interesting. So the Berlin format is 12.4 inches times 18.5 inches. And in terms of pages, I don't even know how many pages it is, but let's just <laughs> say it's going to be 46 pages. It's a thick newspaper. It is a thick newspaper, but... But double-sided, not really. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, I think the New York Times might be like 100 pages sometimes. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, and let's do one inch, one inch margins for our work. Okay, I think we're good to go. Uh, Justin asked, how long did it take to organize the composition for layout of the posters? Oh, yeah. That was a, a long question. time. Um, <laughs> maybe about, well, it took 10 years to design everything. Um, but in terms of the composition for layout, probably about 10 hours, I would say. That's a long time. It is a long time. It's okay, <laughs> it's worth it. <laughs> for sure. So let's start with our master pages. I always start with my master pages. And let's create our, our grid. So I'm going to do six columns per page. Mm -hmm. um, normally with, with, uh, with web design, you would do 12. But I prefer to work with six. And then 0 0.25 gutter. Perfect. Diego asks, I feel there aren't many print designers anymore. You know, I was thinking that when I met her. And it's true. now we got to find all of the, you know, new age print designers. We're it's on true. a mission. Yeah. <laughs> and it's a real art too because it can be a challenge going from RGB to CMYK mm -hmm. to Pantone and and then knowing how to like export all of your files. Oh yeah. Um, the, with the right the, settings. The printing process mm -hmm. is a job on its own it and is. knowing all yeah. of that. Yeah. and how that translates from digital to print. Absolutely. And we're lucky because in my agency in Montreal, we have a technical team and they're experts at this. So I can sort of give them my files and they make sure that they're perfect to go to print. Amazing. Oh, okay. we have one. Lindsay raised her hand. Yay. Oh, hi, Lindsay. Welcome. Yay, print designers. <laughs> so I want your guys' feedback on something. So for the cover, we have a few options. Mm. Um, I designed three different covers. I know which one I like the best, <laughs> but I'm really curious which one you guys like the best. And we're going to integrate some more typography into it, some more editorial typography into it. But I'm curious which one you guys liked in terms of composition and style. OK, so from the left, or let's point. So that would be number one, if you vote for layout number one. <laughs> and then the middle, <laughs> layout number two. And then the far right, layout number three. So mm -hmm. cast Joanie. your votes. <laughs> cast your votes now. Tell us which one to go with. Joni loves the second one. Hi, Joni. Okay. Should I take tally? <laughs> <laughs> so we have one for second, the one on my right. I don't know what your right is, Colleen. <laughs> Let's the just third. assume it's third. the third. <laughs> wow, guys, that's so interesting. So my favorite is the first one. <laughs> 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 Nobody likes the first one. That's my favorite one. Two and three are like, ne okay, wait, no, there's some ones coming. You yeah, guys are going so ones. fast, I can't even keep score. It's two. <laughs> Two's winning. Three seems close. <laughs> <laughs> 911 was <laughs> such a Okay, I don't know. It's a tie between two and three. Okay, so let's go with three then. That's fine. <laughs> You guys, you're hurting me. I, I have number one. <laughs> we ha we had this plan that one was going to win. I just thought one would win. <laughs> okay. Okay. That's fine. 
Thanks you for have the participation, <laughs> everyone. I loved that. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna go with number three then. <laughs> um, so we're gonna add our title, 10 years. And I'm going to go with Times New Roman because I love Times New I Roman. I love Times too. It's not everyone's go-to font, but. It's classy. It's classic, it is. Classy and clean. Okay, so let's go with um, 30 points. And then on the bottom, I think we're going to just add some editorial info. So I'm just going to put Alorm Ipsum for now. And then we're going to make this into three columns, this text, with 0 0.25 gutters. And then I think we should justify it. Some people prefer no justification, but I always like it when it's clean. Mm -hmm. You can go in and change it if you want. Yeah, exactly. Later. And then I'm going to add my name to the bottom of it. Okay, so we're going to use text wrap to clear this bottom space. Amazing. Let's move this in. Diego says, I like justify alignment when there's a lot of text. Yep. Me too. That would yeah. be an ideal yeah. time to have that. For sure. And I think most newspapers use justify as well. Mm -hmm. Then let's make this 0 0.25 so it matches our margins. I love the way your name is spelled. It just like <laughs> it just aesthetically looks very nice. Thank you. So one of the things I like to do is um, I'm always like previewing. I'm going back and forth to preview all the time so mm -hmm. I get a sense of what it looks like. Um, Can you show people? Because I think a lot of people don't know about the preview mode. Yeah, absolutely. So over here in your left corner, you can go from normal, preview, bleed, or slug. Mm -hmm. And I should mention that I don't have a bleed on this document because a lot of newspapers don't need bleeds because they automatically come with the, the trim along the bottom mm -hmm. and tops and edges. So um, no bleed on this one. We do have margins, of course, and so we can go back and forth between normal and preview. Or you can just click W on your keyboard. This is yep. your... Um, this is your key to go back and forth. It's just easier to see it. And actually, I'd be curious to show you guys the first option in the spread now that you see it. So this <laughs> is, it does look good. I like it. Maybe you guys yeah. were right. Thank you for your feedback. <laughs> <laughs> then I'm going to show you quickly what the other one looked like. I feel like they're very similar. They're very similar. It's true. The composition is similar. Yeah, totally. Hi, Eric. Nice to see you. Virtually see you. <laughs> yeah, both are nice. But let's go back yeah. to the other one because that's the one that you guys voted for. <laughs> it looks good. So this is our cover art. Um, again, I have Times New Roman down here. Let me just um, adjust the letting quickly. I think it might be a bit too big. Maybe that's too tight. Yeah, I think it looks nice. I will fill in this text later with um, actual text. I was just going to ask you that. Yeah. <laughs> but lorem ipsum for now until I write the description <laughs> of the project. I love that joke when like someone says lorem ipsum and they're like, who's that? <laughs> <laughs> it gets me every time. <laughs> um, Candace is asking, how do you know when a document needs a bleed or not? Mm, good question. Most print does need a bleed. For example, like business cards, posters, it's always good to put a bleed. Um, it depends on whether the printer is going to have to trim the document or not. Right. If it's a digital document, you don't need a bleed. It's only when it's for print. And you can add bleeds really easily um, in your in your InDesign settings. If you go, if you create a new document, for example, um, 
you can always set your bleeds here. I normally do like a 0 0.25 bleed or 0 0.125 bleed. Okay, so let's jump into the content or let's do our master pages actually. So um, I'm gonna create a new master just for the cover. That way we don't have to worry about affecting the cover. So we're going to keep our title. Maybe we should make it the same font size as, as this one here. Yeah. Just for consistency. Um, my creative director at Tux, she once told me that you should never use more than three font sizes in a design. I've heard that. Yeah, and I think it's true. One yeah. of the best advices I've ever received. Okay, we're gonna add 10 years of type. Oh, thanks for that. Michael just shared the shortcut. Thank you. For the changing the bleeds and margins. Good job. <laughs> and then let's add our page. Our page number. Cool. Oh, we're getting super close to chat and win already. We're just going flying by in here. Make sure you guys stick with us for another 12 minutes so you can get a chance to win those sticker meal stickers and we will be checking in shortly. So I think for the inside cover, I want to add a description, but I want to make it like really big typography. So okay. let's test this out. First thing, let's add um, some body font along the bottom. Just so we fill Easy. in the space. Copy and paste. I'm going to have to write some description here. Um, and I'm going to adjust the margin between the bottom to the top of it. I am going to adjust that so it's perfect, but I'm going to do it a little later because I want to test some things first. And then above, let's just add some big, some big text. So this font here is 30. I always like to work in mathematical increments. So if it's 30, <laughs> I'm gonna times it by three and I'm gonna make the font um, 90. Very precise. Yeah, I always like to be precise in my, uh, in my font That's sizes. That's good because as designers, we are not <laughs> typically <laughs> like <For sure. laughs> mathematically proficient sometimes. Sometimes. You guys true. can correct me if you, one of you is like a mathematician and amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, don't let me, don't let me shoot you down. <laughs> I myself am not. <laughs> so I think I'm just going to like fix up this lorem ipsum so it looks a bit nicer. Mm -hmm. No commas, for example. Maybe. And this is still times, yeah. Still yeah, times. still times. And then also I'm going to get rid of any hyphenation. I like when it's just sort of clean yeah, in front of you. I like that. And again, I'm going to like adjust the margins on the top to bottom. Actually, let's just do that now so we can. This is the way that I normally do it. There's probably a more mathematical correct way to do this. I can be a bit scrappy sometimes in, a, in Adobe. Um, I'm just gonna put this here. Actually, let's do it in the master. Gary, greetings from Newfoundland. <laughs> <laughs> oh, why, why are my masters not there? I think I put this on the page and not the master. Let me fix that quickly. It's nice to know there's a lot of people agreeing with me on the chat about math. It makes me feel, <laughs> makes you feel a lot better. You're setting the example for the rest of us. <laughs> oh, I like that. Now are you doing that the A for page reference or yes, just style? This is the page number. Very cute. Um, and so I'm just going to make sure that my margins are tight. This is a bit technical, so forgive me if it's a little bit um, boring to watch. <laughs> but I'm just going to make sure that my margins are the same from above uh, my lettering and then below it. I mean, this is all important for yeah. print because, yeah. you know, unlike digital, I mean, you shouldn't mess up in any case, but print yeah. is a little bit more unforgiving. <laughs> for sure. And also, I find like if you make sure that all your grids are tight and, and perfectly organized, it's going to make your design feel more clean and minimal and professional in the end anyways. Yeah. So it's worth taking the time to make your grid mm -hmm. precise because it will actually make your design feel, feel more sophisticated. 
Um, so I think I'm going to adjust this. Okay, let's try 94. And again, see, so we have this like same space above and below. Mm -hmm. Let's put that on your line. And sometimes I'm just going to remove some words to keep it really, keep it really clean. Um, I don't know, maybe we could add like a second font here to keep it hmm. interesting. Yeah. Is Times New Roman too boring on its own? I don't know. I think it, well, what do you, what do you guys think? Should we add a different font or are we liking the Times New Roman? Let us know. I think for print, it just looks so nice. Yeah, it's clean. Mm -hmm. But we can experiment. Yeah. Send Let's us try. some. Send us some um, recommendations. Maybe we could try like a, a sans serif and a serif combination. See okay. what it looks like. Yeah, that would be cool. Or maybe. Oh, I think I know. Okay, this is kind of crazy, guys. <laughs> <laughs> We're going rogue. <laughs> Um, so I really love Editorial New. This is a font from Pangram Pangram, which is a Montreal foundry. I love the idea of like combining a weird size serif with a with like a normal proportion serif and then yeah. maybe even a sans serif. I love that. We're getting crazy, guys. You know, we're just, it's a little wild, never hurts anyone. Someone, well, oh, Cos uh, Comic Sans is one of my favorites. Comic Sans, That's why not? Roboto's good. I like Lotto. I never know if it's Lado or Lado. Well, Proxima Nova is a good one too. I like mm -hmm. that one. For sure. Comic Sans, please. <laughs> yeah, I think Comic Sans is, is a good one. I'm waiting for someone to ironically bring back Comic Sans. <laughs> it might happen. It might. <laughs> I mean, okay, yeah. Let's try. <laughs> it will. You happen. never know. It will happen. <laughs> it will happen. It will. Um, I'm surprised no one has For <laughs> said sure. Alphatica yet. Yeah. Let's try <laughs> New, Mont uh, New Machina. No, let's do New Montreal Light. Avenir. Again, New Montreal Light. There's is the Helvetica. I was waiting for it. Helvetica. I was waiting for one person. You know, I lo let's do Helvetica. I love Helvetica. I it's, love Helvetica too. I know that it's like so popular, but it's a beautiful font. It's perfectly proportioned. It's like Times. It's because it's timeless, but yeah. it's like Times New Roman yeah, in that exactly. sense. No, let's see. Is this is this too much? Are we going like a bit too crazy? Futura. You guys are giving some really good recommendations. I feel like you've said all of my favorites so far. <laughs> and then I always feel like the serifs are like, whenever I combine a serif and a sans serif, mm -hmm. the serif is always a little bit smaller than the sans serif. Oh, so I, okay. I adjust it so it looks proportion uh, to be more correct. So let's just make this one like 56. And let's adjust this to be 58. I don't know, we have some options. We're playing around. Hmm. I think I like, is the comic on the bottom? No, that's Helvetica. Yeah, we go to Editorial Times New Roman to Helvetica. Let's okay. see. What do you guys think? Should we keep it minimal or should we keep it complex? Minimal or complex? <laughs> <laughs> I love all this crowdsourcing. <laughs> it's Tell fun, I love soon. your feedback, it's great. <laughs> Everyone here is super involved, I love it. <laughs> Uh -huh. Someone Again. says Helvetica or Universe and Times. What's Universe and Universe and Times? Gotcha. Poppins. I don't know if I know what Poppins looks like. Okay. Um, Good feedback. It's interesting. You know, I think, I think for the sake of this practice, let's just keep it Times New Roman for now. Yeah. Oh, people are saying go complex. Go complex. <laughs> Too complex. One minimal. Okay. So mm. I think we're gonna go complex because, or actually, we got a bunch of minimals. We're gonna leave it minimal, in your hands. Minimal, minimal. Wow, you guys too have many. so much feedback. I love it. Thank you so much. We okay. have too many drivers, friends. <laughs> <laughs> too many cooks in the kitchen. Okay, let's add some like emojis. Yay. <laughs> okay. Um, and all right, I think we're good. Because we have a lot of other stuff to, to get to, so let's just keep it chill for now. And, and we can always come back to this and fix it up later. Yep. Um, I'm going to quickly just, just to finish it there. Okay. And so of course, later when I, when I finish this, I'm going to like fill this page in with like the description of the project and, and like the meaning of the posters. Um, all the posters were designed, some of them are designs I did for projects and other posters are just like phrases that speak to me, poetry that speaks to me, um, 
I love the idea of like expressing ourselves creatively through design. Mm -hmm. So a lot of these posters are just sort of expressions of, of myself and my thoughts and my feelings. So I hope they resonate with you. I love that. Especially with the tie-in of year 30th and 2020. Totally. All very important times. So let's jump into, oh, our chat and win is soon. I know, that just flew by. I feel like every time I'm on here, like time is just going. Well, while we, we wait. One little mini thing, yeah. Yeah, for sure. So these are all the posters here. Um, I've already put them on a grid in Illustrator and everything has the proper margins and proportions for the newspaper because I don't think there would be enough time for us to do all of that live. Mm -hmm. These posters were originally in hundreds of different size formats. Um, so everything was like cleaned up and, and put into this layout. Um, everything is single page. They're not in any particular order. I think we can sort of change the order and we can pair posters side by side that feel good next to each other um, that allow the other one to like breathe and, and feel relevant. And you brought all of these in on artboards? These are all artboards, yeah. Cool. These are all artboards in Illustrator. And I have my, my grids here just so everything has proper margins, Simil the same as the newspaper. Very cool. So, do you have a favorite? <laughs> do I have a favorite? They're all kind of important to me in, in different ways. Mm -hmm. um, I really, I really love these ones. This is from my Flags of America project, which you guys might know from my Behance. Um, these ones are like really special to me because they stand for something that I believe in. I love that. And then a lot of them, a lot of them like come from different, different ideas. Like the femme, um, the femme poster, this comes from the idea that like anyone can feel like they're feminine. Anyone can embrace their femininity. I love that. Brooke has a quick question. Sorry, I already shortened your name, Brooklyn. Um, how long did it take to do the grid layout? Not very long, maybe like 40 minutes, maybe even less than that. Um, because all I did in Illustrator, you just have to go like make your correct sizes. And then if you're a CMYK or print or not, and then you can just choose how many artboards you want. So if you want to have like, you know, 500 artboards, artboards you just click that and it's going to make it for you like really, really simple. And then you just create your margins. Okay, All so. Right. We have less than a minute and 30 seconds until chat and win. So get ready. If you have some questions, shout out your questions. If you see a friend on the chat, say hey. If you just want to shout a random word, you can do that too. <laughs> But make sure you guys are ready to go, ready to type, because we have about one minute left. Ooh, I like that. So we're just going to bring everything into the newspaper from Illustrator now. And we, I do have some that were made in InDesign. So some are made in InDesign, some are for document. It was in design school, they were in a final exam, and the professor pulled the plug on the computer oh as my a God. test to as see a who practice. saved their document. <laughs> yeah. Genius, but also terrifying. Also terrifying. Oh my gosh. Just command S, it's very easy. Oh my gosh, and I'm assuming that's before autosave and all yeah. of that. Oh yeah. man, that's Before scary. recover documents. That's scary. Don't do that. <laughs> that's true. Um, okay. All right, we are almost there. Three, two, one. It's chat and win time. Whoop, whoop. So you guys know the drill. Just start sending us messages, talk to your friends, just make sure you're chatting and texting away and we will be right back with a winner. People are going really fast today. <laughs> I can, can barely see what's being written. Win, win, cool, <laughs> cool, winning, winning. <laughs> California, someone says dope. <laughs> it's always fun to see what people end up saying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> great typo, hello, great world. <laughs> Keep going, guys. <laughs> you guys are doing great. You're doing fantastic. Aw, thank you, Matt. <laughs> you caught something? Yeah, my friend Matt. Matt's um, a technical designer at my agency. Super oh. talented technical designer. Hey, hey, Montreal. 
keep it going, keep it up, keep it up. Oh, I love when people do emojis. There's a saxophone, <laughs> a mouse, yes, a I saxophone. Know that one. <laughs> Congrats, Felix. We have a winner. It's Felix Barr. Congratulations. You have won 100 free sticker mill uh, stickers. Um, I would love to see what you end up making, and you should send us one, and we'll sport it on our laptops. But congratulations, and for those of you who didn't win, it's okay because we have a discount code, and just do stickermill.com slash wlive20. So we're all winners all the time. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. All right, let's get back to the magic. <laughs> so I'm not sure which, which posters I want to have side by side. I'm going to just maybe like add everything in and then move the pages around. <laughs> I'm reading your chat live. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> now we're getting a lot of emojis. Avocado. Man, that sounds good right now. <laughs> Congrats, Felix, again. Oh, hi, Emily. Is Emily another? Emily's a friend, yeah. Yay, we love friends here. Hi, Guillaume. Welcome. And these are all friends from Montreal. Welcome. Graphic designers, really talented graphic designers. I'm gonna come visit you all yeah, one day. Yeah, you should. I really wanna come. <laughs> I'll give you a nice tour of the city. I'm gonna brush up on my French just cause, just yeah. so I can go back and forth. It's fun, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Ooh, that one's fun. What does it say? It says Bacchus, which is um, which is a Greek god. Ooh. Mm -hmm. What is his, his, hers, well, god, his? <laughs> um, wine and dance and hedonism, essentially. What? Yeah. What? That is really cool. <laughs> <laughs> Did not expect that. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of random. It's like it's a true. party yeah. god. It is the party god. It's actually the party god, but like respectfully. Respectfully, the party. The yeah. party. It's god. not like debaucherous or anything. That's cool. I think these two side by side look pretty. They look pretty cool. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Acid test. Someone just said that in the chat earlier. <laughs> <laughs> did you see it or did you already know? Are you psychic? Some, someone, I promise you, said it before you showed it. Yeah, someone someone had seen it and they said they liked it, oh, I think. Very cool. You guys are in the know. March 14th. What does March 14th mean to you? This is the day that my dad passed away. Oh, man. Mm -hmm. So it's a special day for me. Very cool. Which one should go next to it? Maybe this one is kind of nice. I love that all of these are tied to a very cool, memorable mm -hmm. experience. For sure. And like some are lighthearted, some are more serious. It mm -hmm. depends on the poster. But I like, that's like life, you know, we have like ups and downs and fun moments and sad moments. Totally. Yeah, these are nice side by side. I love the idea of putting these into a newspaper format because you can like put it on your coffee table or you mm -hmm. can frame it or you can just keep it as a keepsake yeah. as an art book. Have you seen, there's those coffee tables that have like the glass seal and then you can like put something underneath. I would totally see this. Yeah, that'd be nice. Collaged underneath, that'd be such a cool piece. Let's put this one over to the side. The art of blank of politics. <clears throat> Love it. And this is um, a nice font. This is Rupert. If you guys have any questions about like which fonts I've used for each piece, feel free to let me know. I, I can try to remember there as best as I can. Do you use mostly foundries that are based in Canada or do you dabble around and you have any favorites? I use a lot of different, I use a lot of different foundries from all over the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have like, I probably spend way too much time looking for fonts. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like every, that's everyone's problem. It's true, it's true. You can get lost in it. I think we should do this one next. This is a this is like a Drake song. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I for, I feel like everyone forgets that he's from Canada. Oh, that's true. He is. Yeah, he's he's very like well known in Toronto. Yeah. Very. The very one blessed. time I went to Vancouver, there was a Drake party. A Drake and party. <laughs> I I couldn't believe it, and and apparently it's like a a monthly thing. 
And, what? Uh, that's and, unnecessary. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I thought it was kind of cool. At the time. I was like, that's pretty cool. You just have a monthly party because you're was, Drake and you're, you know, from the country. He was there? He wasn't there. Well, oh. actually, I don't know because I'd never got in. It oh. was like, that's a story on its own. Okay. Never got in, never got to see if he was there or not, but. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well. And Someday. One day. I'm going to go back to Vancouver and attend a Drake party and see yeah, if he's there. Yeah, for sure. If I go to Toronto, go to a Drake party in Toronto. Oh, yeah, that's probably better. Let's see. Let's do this one ASMR. I'm like a self, I like enjoy ASMR. I'm not, I'm not ashamed of it. <laughs> There's a lot of us, trust me. A lot of us. That's true. <laughs> it's weirdly soothing. Yeah, I find like if you're doing design work or like if you're coding, for example, mm -hmm. you can just like completely zone out. Yeah. Den asked if you have a favorite type foundry, which I'm sure is a hard to answer. Yeah, it's hard to answer. I mean, I love like I love what Pangram Pangram is doing. They have so many nice fonts for everything. Um, oh gosh, that's a really good question. Yeah, I have like a folder over here with like just type foundries, so it's a. Oof. I can name I can name a couple. If you guys want to, you can like DM me on Instagram, and I can send you some favorites. One more question from. Thomas or Tomas, um, what kind of paper will you print? Um, kind of thin, cheap newspaper or something more thick? I think just like a cheap newsprint. I like this sort of like lightweight, mm -hmm. grayish, off-tone color paper. Very cool. Maybe let's grab one from over here. Okay, let's do this one. This one is a Simon and Garfunkel lyric. We're really like all over the board. <laughs> Going all over the map. Mm -hmm, I sure. love it. I love how it's just, it's things you can relate to, mm -hmm, it's things you've sure. heard of, maybe things you haven't heard of. And like the other thing is we use design so much for commercial projects and for, you know, our, our, our big commercial clients that we often forget that we can use design as like an artistic expression. Yeah. And I love the idea of taking all those skills that we learn from working with clients and applying that in, a, in an artistic way. Should we fill the frame? I don't know, I kind of like it. I kind of like it at the top. Yeah. What would you want to fill it with? Just text or? I think I would just make it bigger to fill the whole frame. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, let's leave it like that. I like it. <clears throat> and let's grab another one. So this one is all the cities that I visited in the last 10 years. Oh my goodness, you've been everywhere. Oh, no, sorry. <laughs> yes, this is where I've been. <laughs> I was like, because there's one of where I've been and one where I want to go. Oh, okay. This is the one that's where I've been. And I really enjoy this font. It's not for everybody. Um, the one that's Montreal is what in? This is Minotaur Beef. The whole font is actually Minotaur. Mm -hmm. And it comes in like so many different weights and styles. And oh, wow. You wouldn't like traditionally put them together. Mm -hmm. But I like them all kind of mismatched with yeah. tight letting. It's like a fun. It, it looks really cool. The one with the Syracuse. It's like a. That's one that's really fun. Where's Trois Rivi Rivieres? <laughs> Trois Rivieres. It's in Montreal. It's in outside Montreal. It's in ah. Quebec. Yeah, I went there a few weeks ago. Very cool. And then this one is where I want to go. Some places are repeated. Maybe I should put them side by side. Maybe. If you so you said you repeated some of them. Yeah, cause some of the places. I've already been to, I want to return to. Oh, I love that. I was going to ask. Oh, now <laughs> I can add San Francisco to this one. Yeah. Are you going to do that now, or are you going to, is that? Oh, let's do it now. Yeah. Let's Special. We're doing a edit based <laughs> on real time. Real time travel. Because you have, can add another city. Okay. That's kind of exciting, like when you get your, pa your passport stamped. Mm -hmm. For sure. You feel very accomplished. I went to China last year and getting that like Chinese stamp on my passport oh, was really what does exciting. What that look like? I don't remember. <laughs> you know, sometimes they don't stamp your passport. I just recently went to Italy for the first time mm -hmm. and I was so excited to end the trip to get my stamp and they didn't give it to me. And oh, it that's the sad. worst. Yeah, I didn't know yeah, that could happen. You're right. There's something like symbolic about having all of mm -hmm. the stamps in your passport. Yeah, it's kind of like a scrapbooking. Like that's how you feel. Mm -hmm, for sure. It's a reference to fun experiences, places you've been. 
Valerie asks, could you explain one of the posters, like how the font composition conveys the meaning behind it? Sure. Mm, that's a good question. Not all of them are necessarily paired for any particular reason. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe in like some, maybe in some posters the font was chosen for a certain reason. A lot of times it's just because I love the typography, mm -hmm. and, I, and I, for example, like for example, in the Bacchus poster, I feel like this font that I chose it really works well with the concept of, of like a Greek god. Mm -hmm. um, a lot, of, a lot of them are just sort of fonts that I love. I wish I could give you a more meaningful answer to that question. <laughs> <laughs> what about the roll poster? The roll poster. This is for a project I did maybe two years ago and it was um, a celebration of Celine, the fashion brand, which is one of my oh, favorite fashion brands. Very cool. But it was when um, Fabe Filo was the creative director of the brand, and mm -hmm. it really had this like beautiful aesthetic that was very empowering for, for women and people who identify as femme, and it was sort of like a, um, a masculine approach to women's wear that was very empowering. So this, this poster speaks to like the roles that we play as women and how we can how we can like empower ourselves through our style. Yeah, I kind of see that through it, the way that it's <clears throat> layered on top of each other. It's like For you sure. can play multiple roles. Okay, let's fix this one up. <laughs> okay, now we need to find one for this page here. Okay. Next to the new good times. Let's do this one. And so whenever I'm gonna do a full um, a full page poster, mm -hmm. I'm just going to hide the hide the master details. And I'm not going to do it in any kind of complicated way. I'm just adding a white box. Oh, okay. And um, I'm going to arrange it and send it to the back just so it's hidden. I'm gonna do the same thing for the page number. I like the idea of having like every couple pages a full fa a full page spread. Yeah, I like that. Hi, Abdullah. Abdullah Sherid, senior graphic designer from Kabul City. Three plus years of experience. Congratulations. So this poster here was for a project um, called Rebel Rebel, which is on my Behance, but this is the address of CBGB's in New York, which is no longer a bar, but it was. Oh no. Yeah, it's like a very famous um, like punk bar, oh, cool. rock and roll bar in the 70s. When did it close down? I don't know, but I think it closed down maybe in the, in the 90s. Did you get to visit? Oh no, for sure, definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> I was like a child. <laughs> I know. Maybe they, maybe like your parents took you. You can <laughs> obviously you weren't drinking. <laughs> Desire as round as peaches, bloom in all me, all night. So this is from. Oh my gosh! Every poster has a story. If you guys get bored <laughs> of my stories, please. No, they're I can all stop. so different. I love it. <laughs> this is um, a poem by Anne Carson called. Um, short talk on hedonism, and Anne Carson's a really beautiful poet and one of my favorite poets um, ever. And she's currently a professor at NYU. Oh, cool. So she's like still writing, and um, her work like really resonates. Hmm. Lindsay New, closed in 2006. Thank you, Lindsay, thanks for letting us you know. You guys are so great. Lindsay, were you, uh, did you go there frequently? Tell us what the vibe was like. You need more context to the story. <laughs> oh, she Googled it. <laughs> That's okay, too. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's totally okay. <laughs> but you know, from what I know, it was just like an epicenter of, um, of like rock and roll, and it was really like where the punk movement was founded. Very cool. You a big punk fan? Um, I really like all genres of music. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think there's like something great about being able to listen to punk music and then country music and then, you know, folk music and going back and forth. Yeah. And you can find inspiration in everything, you know? Seriously, yeah. Like we have 
CBGB's, Drake, and Simon and Garfunkel already. <laughs> <laughs> All in one newspaper. Yeah, it's true. It should be, we should. Did you print this or are you going to print this? Yeah, I'm going to print it. I'll Ooh. send you a copy of oh my Oh my gosh, it. please. Man. So let's do, this one is going to be like a full page spread. I don't know if it's gonna look good. I haven't, I haven't tried it. Oh, nice. The light within you, the shadows within me. I think I know this one. Yeah, this one's on my B hands as well. Mm -hmm. And maybe I'm gonna cover up the, the title. And the page number too? Or I just think. the title? Yeah, let's cover both up. Yeah. Just for this one. Valerie, um, sorry, Valerie asked if you do lettering. Yeah, sometimes I do. I actually really love to do lettering and illustrator. Oh. It's really time consuming, <laughs> um, but it's super fun to do. I try to have as as few pen points as possible. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> that gets, it's my challenge. Yeah, that can get wild. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> okay, let's see if I have this one yet. I don't think I do. Now tell us more about what you do as an art director. Are you working on a lot of print-based projects or is mm -hmm. it kind of across the board? It's really across the board. We do we do all sorts of stuff um, at the agency where I'm working in, which is tax. We do, a lot of times it's like 360 branding projects. So it's everything from like logo design to um, brand standards. And then from there we'll do, you know, photo shoots and video shoots and commercials. Um, and then my favorite thing to do is to turn a sort of a, a brand standard into an environmental space. Oh, very cool. Yeah, that's my favorite for sure. I love, I love doing environmental design and taking graphics from a screen and into an environment. Mm. Let's see if I can find one. Yeah, of course. Oh, is it tux. Tux .co, but maybe our Behance would be better. Okay, yeah. I think I have that. Because we have lots of new projects. In there. Oh wait, your agency has a Behance? <laughs> yeah, we do. So cool. Yeah. It's rare I see like a brand or a company that has their own Behance. And it's nice too because all the designers are credited for the projects and so we all have them in our portfolios. You guys are ahead of the curve. Yeah. So how would I... So this one, oh there it is, there. Right, this one? Yep, so if you go to multiple owners, mm -hmm. you'll oh, see all of is. the talented team. Very cool, you guys are great. Thank you. AIGA certified. Oh, amazing. <laughs> For sure. Any particular one we should shout out? Let's see. You want to see like environmental design or? Yeah, let's see that since yeah. you're talking about that's your favorite. Maybe Hartmel Motel. That was a really fun one. It's very like bright and vibrant and uh, it's like really eye catching. Where's that one? It's on the top. Ooh. Yeah, it's that one. Melt some hearts. This is it. <laughs> <laughs> Heart Met Hotel. I yeah. love the way that even sounds. Mm -hmm. And I love the type here too. It's like a nice combination of contemporary. I think it's Ginto and Tomato. Those are the two fonts that I paired mm -hmm. for the logo. And did you actually build this sign? Yeah, we had oh everything God. built. So cool. Yeah, Emily is talking in the conversation. She worked on this with me. Very cool. Too. Oh my gosh, I love this. Yeah, so the the space had, I think, six different rooms, and mm -hmm. then each room had its own um, story. But everything was inspired by the 1960s and sort of like the psychedelia of the 1960s. Yeah. Um, and each room has its own personality. This pool. <laughs> yeah, this <laughs> Alone. is. Alone. This With is the flamingos. A, a whole world. Oh my gosh, how fun. Yeah, so there was lots of social media influencers who came and had their photos taken. Oh my um, it was a really fun project to work on. We had we had a really good time putting this together. This is great. Yeah. So much fun. The best part about doing this kind of work mm -hmm. is seeing how people react to it. Oh, I'm in sure. This I'm sure people were like, did not sh like, like expect to show up to the mall and <laughs> exactly. you know, like, see something like this. They're like, it's so what? true. It's automatically like, what is going on? It's so true. And this was in a room, I assume, one of the rooms? This is one of the rooms, yeah. Very cool. Yeah, okay, we sorry, we're else. going off track. <laughs> so cool, love it. Oh, in this room we cover the wall in fur. Oh my gosh, this it's not real fur, it's faux fur. So fun, and yeah. you have to paint all of that. Oh my goodness! For sure, 
Very cool. If you guys want to see more, um, let me go back to the main page just so you can. Tux Creative Co. If you want to check out some more of their work, here it is. Now let's get back on track because I will go down a rabbit hole. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's do this one. This one, Manly, is also from the Celine series. And then let's take another one from over here. I like this one, Make Yourself sc Scarce. So when I was, um, I grew up in Newfoundland, which is a province on the east coast of Canada. It's like very far out in the Atlantic Ocean. And downtown St. John's, there was this this sort of roundabout that you could drive to get to one street to the other. Mm -hmm. And someone had graffiti on it, make yourself scarce. And it mm -hmm. always stayed with me like my whole life. I don't know if it's still there anymore, but I love the idea of keeping yourself scarce, especially in a world that's so, you know, overpowered by social media. And, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. And yeah, that's, that's interesting that somebody graffitied that. I wonder mm -hmm. what, like what, cause them to think that and tag it. Yeah. I like that. I have a feeling there's this, um, it's sort of like a British saying, like, make yourself scarce. It's like something that a parent would say to a child. Yeah, maybe. When they're in trouble. It's <laughs> a cool parent. I don't know if I could imagine anyone's parent here saying that. It no. It seems too cool. It's definitely like a British <laughs> yeah. thing. So we are almost 30 minutes away from design feedback. So if you guys participated in the daily creative challenge that Jesse went over earlier today, make sure you go to the top of Behance and then click on the challenge tab and submit your work so we can take a look and see what you did. Ooh, why do I see a face? Am I, I looking know. at the right thing? No? It's not a face, but... I'm always looking for <laughs> some, like, hidden... <laughs> like, yeah, for Double sure. meaning in things. I mean, it's, it is like a cloud, so we often yeah. see shapes and clouds. See, on the left, I, I don't know why I see a nose and an eye. Yeah, it's cool. I don't know. I like Maybe that. I'm just Interpretation. <laughs> My weird interpretation. I need glasses, I'm always like this. I do the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> I should have readers on right now, but yeah, me too. you know, we're bending the rules today. It's fine. I have them, I'm just not wearing them. It's okay. Um, okay, let's see, this one here. Maybe let's go back. Oh, this one's fun. I made this one so fast, and I was like inspired by the shapes, but it's actually lyrics to Achy Breaky Heart. Oh, the classic Achy Breaky Heart? Yeah, so we really have, we have like hip hop, country, folk. I know, we're, <laughs> you really go across the board. I love it. <laughs> Hitting everyone's like special place. Yes, yeah. there's something for everyone in here. <laughs> That song always reminds me of my mom. Really? I remember listening to it in the car with her when I was a kid. Oh, that's a really wonderful memory. Mm -hmm. Would you guys sing it together? Uh, of course. <laughs> yeah, and Shania Twain. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, gosh. That's a classic. Anything her in a car is uh -huh. just like a mood. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's true. I saw her live maybe two years ago. It was one of the best nights of my life. <laughs> No, but she was really great live. It was a really amazing concert, but there's a funny story. <laughs> but no, she was really good live. It was a really interactive performance. I've heard she's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she's great. Okay, let's see what else we have. Now let's see, maybe we can like move some posters around because I'm not sure if I like the order necessarily. Okay. I kind of wanted to start really strong. I think this is like a nice page to start with. Okay. Hmm, 
And maybe we can mix these two up here. <laughs> Eric, it's okay to wear glasses. <laughs> I actually really love glasses. I have a funny story. Mm -hmm. um, when I was in elementary school, I, for some reason, I, life was backwards and like all the cool kids wore glasses in my eyes <laughs> and all the not cool kids didn't wear glasses. <laughs> so I like begged my mom. I remember begging her like, mom, can we go get my eyes checked for the second time this year? I feel like I need glasses. You really wanted them. I really wanted them and they found like the most micro prescription like they could give me just, <laughs> just to make me happy so I could get glasses. That's cute. And then turns out it like actually like <laughs> made my eyesight worse and I had perfect vision. <laughs> and so I was like, well, I did it for the fashion so it doesn't matter. Okay. <laughs> okay, so. There's something going, weird going on with this poster. See how oh, it no. has this like giant box around it? There seems yeah. to be like maybe it's a grid mark. Sometimes when I'm working with type, I'll like put a grid into like one letter, and then I have to dig deep to find oh, it. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. The zoom in. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's exactly what it is. It's a grid mm. deep in the layer. I'm gonna fix that later because <laughs> that could take me like ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Nazir, Nazir um, just joined and wants to know what we're creating today. So maybe we can do a little refresher. And mm -hmm. just fill people in who just joined us. Yeah, absolutely. So today we're making um, a creative newspaper that's inspired by, you know, the classic newspaper format. Mm -hmm. But it's filled with like really interesting and fun art pieces that are from um, my work over the last 10 years because we're celebrating 2020 and 10 years of being a designer. So all of these posters are posters that I've made over the last. Um, 10 years of my career, well mostly like five years, <laughs> um, and we're putting them into the newspaper format and then we're going to print it off as sort of like a creative editorial piece. Yeah. Oh yeah, parents often use the make yourself scarce phrase in the, oh what does it say? In the, oh it's cut off. Oh. But yeah, it's a classic British parent thing, make yourself scarce. My mom's my probably friend. watching this and she's like, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so late, but this is so cool. No, it's okay. You're right on time. <laughs> You're right on time. Oh my god, I have my mouse here. Oh my gosh, I forgot about the my mouse. My whole time I've been using my trackpad. <laughs> Okay, we're living life, like we're literally doing everything on the wild side today. No glasses. It's true. Just, you know, we're just winging it. It's true. <laughs> um, and also like people don't use their navigator very often, but I love my navigator. I have to have my navigator on mm -hmm. all the time when I'm working in Illustrator and Photoshop. It's, it's like m one of my favorite tools, especially if you're working with a lot of different artboards. Mm -hmm. It helps you like, you know, having to do this is often like really sort yeah. of tedious. Yeah, it's funny. I don't hear a lot of people that use it. No, it's not a very popular tool. Gary says, yes. I think he's a believer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're about to hit the 30 minute mark for design feedback for your daily creative challenge today. Um, if you didn't catch Jesse's stream, make sure you go watch the playback and then Try to get some work done in the next 20 minutes or 25, 28 minutes. Um, we would really love to see your designs, um, your surreal um, compositions with masking. And yeah, I think you're doing some masking stuff. So make sure you send that to us and go to the challenge tab to submit. And then we'll give you some feedback on your work. Make friends and money. <laughs> I'm sure that resonates with a lot of people. <laughs> yes. But also making friends is more important. It is more important, which is why it's first. Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> What's that font in the, the second part? 
This, the pixel font? Yeah, the pixeled font. Um, this font, I don't remember the name of it. I could definitely find it for you, but if you guys are interested, I, I have like a really great way to turn an illustration or like a letter into a pixeled letter. Oh, cool. I could show you tomorrow if you want. Yeah, um, and come back for the, the tricks. Yeah, we could make another poster and we could we could make it like a pixelized font because it's super trendy right now and I love the way it looks. Yeah, it looks really cool. And it's so easy to do as well. Anthony uses the navigator in Illustrator to keep track. Yes, we need to all practice being organized. <laughs> guys trailblaze it for the rest of us. <laughs> it's true, navigator is underappreciated. Eric asks, were these posters real jobs or just personal work? It's a little blend of both, right? It's a blend of both, mm -hmm. yeah. So some of them come from um, personal jobs, like this one here, this is from a job. Um, I made this as like a t-shirt design actually for a photo The femme shoot. one? Yep. Oh, I could see that on a t-shirt. Yep, so we had, yeah. I think we had like femme down the sleeve. Ooh. Maybe I have it here. Um, Cause we made, I made, um, oh yeah, here it is. Oh cool, Yeah. I like it. Yeah, we had it printed for a photo shoot. And we, uh, it was a really great photo shoot. It was for the Rebel Rebel photo shoot, actually. Oh, wow. Yeah, and we gave it to the client afterwards as a gift. And they she really liked loved it. it. Yeah, but I would love to get them printed, really, on like a nice, like, maybe hemp fabric. Mm -hmm. But it's it's very, like, in your face. It's definitely an out there design. No, it's fun. <laughs> Some of these are all t-shirt. You might see this Ooh, one. Oh, that one's cool. I like that. Mm -hmm. I, I like that font. Yeah, so that one is, um, this one this in our one. poster. Yeah, this one's right here. Yeah, I think just like seeing it with the color and the mm -hmm. and the orbs like really brings out the font. Totally, and this one here is also in color. How fun. These are like very vibrant designs. Mm -hmm. I love it. And then this one is, I think it's yeah, the odd volumes one. Very cool. Voodoo Val, who is one of our amazing. Um, moderators on the chat. She would like to know what your favorite design influences are. I feel like that's always such a hard question. Yeah, it's a tough question for yeah. sure. So I have so many like mm -hmm. design influences. I love, all of my creative directors over the years have taught me a lot and they have inspired me a lot over the years. Um, also, I mean, Polisher, I love Polisher's work. Mm. She's I don't always- I I'm familiar. Yeah, she's with Pentagram in New York. Um, who else? Stefan Sagmeister, of course. I love, I love their studio. Well, now it's just now it's like Jessica Walsh has her own studio, and Sagmeister has his own studio. But I've always loved their work for being like outside the box and, and sort of breaking the rules. Mm -hmm. um, who else? I have so many. Um, Collins Agency in San Francisco. I love the work that that they're doing as well. Very cool. There's a lot of great designers out there. A lot of talent, yeah. I'll think more about it though. I'll think more about it. So here, I think there's a bit of an issue. I'm gonna maybe redo this one so that it fits the format a bit nicer. Maybe it's okay. Yeah, looks good. I wish there was a navigator in InDesign. Is there? There's not, is there? I don't think so. No. I've never used it. If there is. Grow a mind, young heart. Yeah, so this one is also from the Celine series. Um. I feel like it's fun to show you guys the posters in color too because you yeah. can see the see them in a different context. Yeah, I forgot that you um, put them all in black and white for yeah. this particular. Ooh, very cool. Mm -hmm. Against the black is always so nice. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. So you can see them. This is the one that we're working on right now. Very cool. And who was this for again? This is just my own project for fun. Oh, fun. Yeah. Yeah, that's These the series. 
Where do you pull the photography? Do you use stock or do you? I use both. So these ones are all from Celine's collections. Mm -hmm. um, but if I'm doing work for a client, I'll always use stock photos or we'll take our own photos oh, okay. in the studio. Perfect. Yeah. Which is nice because then you get to style the models and you get to pick out the clothes and mm -hmm. hair and makeup and stuff. So you really get to, to make it your own project start to finish. Yeah, that's always a fun part. Yeah, absolutely. Isabella, do you speak another language? <laughs> <laughs> well, I live in Montreal, which is a very like bilingual place. So I speak French pretty good. I'm learning every day, um, taking French lessons, which is awesome. It's a really beautiful language for sure. Mm -hmm. I do not fluently, but I know a little bit of Spanish and a little bit of French. Oh yeah, I know some Spanish too. Yeah. I love, I've always found Spanish to be like a pretty, um, almost an easier language than French to learn. I don't know why. Yeah, um, yeah I find that too. Yeah, it just kind of comes more naturally. And it's actually really easy to understand like dialogue to me, I don't know, like I'm able to. Yeah, exactly. Like really point out conversations, even if I don't quite know how to engage back. Mm -hmm. Whereas French is, it's just a little tricky. Like, yeah, I think, um, yeah, it's true. It's French, here, it's harder to hear the rules, breaks. Maybe. Maybe. Muy bien, como están? Oh. <laughs> Hola Diego, Hola Dave. <laughs> <laughs> woo woo. Oh. Que palabras conocen? Does this mean like what words do I know? I think so. You know my favorite Spanish word is calabaza, which means pumpkin, <laughs> I love this word. Or calcetines, which means socks in yep. Spanish. Mm -hmm. These are my favorite words. Socks. <laughs> <laughs> it's I'm true. Like, it's trying true. to hold that and I'm like, that's really random and it's funny. <laughs> yeah, but it's so great to say. Oh. Please keep it chat in English. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we tried. Oh, for sure. For sure. <laughs> I think I don't have the swing yet, do I? I don't think so. I want to go through everything and make sure that I have everything in order. Okay, so and we missing. changed, so you acid, the acid page is the, the first, first one. And then which one did you move? I think I missed that. I moved, I moved that one to the front mm -hmm. and then I'm not sure which one I moved now, but I'm gonna go through everything and make sure that it's all in the order that I want it to be. Mm -hmm. Calcetinas for the win, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's go into presentation mode and just go through everything quickly. There's still a few missing. Okay. Um, but I wanna just get a sense of the design so far. <laughs> yeah. Aww. Yeah, the cover's looking good. I might um, just adjust some of these margins in here because, or some of these like borders because it's feeling a little bit tight. Okay. It's not breathing as well as I would like it to, so that's one of the things I'm going to clean up. But yeah, I like this cover. The cover looks good. Yeah. It's very similar to yep. option one. There's a lot of movement in mm -hmm. the letters. I love that. Okay, so we're going to fill this in with a proper text. Um, there's a lot of font down here, so I'm not sure how much I'm actually going to write. I'm probably not gonna write that much because that's probably like too many words. Um, Are you gonna type it in or copy and paste? I'm gonna copy and paste it in. Okay. But maybe I'll write it tonight and then tomorrow we can finish everything up and like export everything and put it into um, like the actual printing export. So let's go through everything. I'm thinking it might be nice to make the 10 years of type a little bit smaller. Yeah, I can yeah. see that. And yeah, this one looks good together too. And you can see how because like the grid is so specific and because the margins are so tight, it gives it this feeling of like um, of like that it can breathe and mm -hmm. having the same margin here and here and here and here, it, it just gives it a sense of professionalism that is that is really nice to have in design. Yeah. That's a fun page. Uh, yeah, I like that one a lot. The one on the right, um, what is that from? 
That's the t-shirt design. Is it? Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, it is. Yeah. I, okay. But I have it laid out in a different way. Mm -hmm. The light within you, the shadows within me. This is from um, a couple years ago. I went to Luis Varigan's home in Mexico City. Mm -hmm. Oh, speaking of Spanish, but <laughs> um, and he's an architect, a really like beautiful architect, and he. Um, we went, to, we went to his home anyways. It was just such a beautiful house and everything in the house was perfectly composed. Like every shadow had been considered, every light source had been considered. It was, it was without being cheesy, mm -hmm. it was really like a spiritual experience to go to his house um, and it really inspired me. And so this is where this phrase comes from, so the, the light within you, the shadow within me, because it's, it reminded me of being in his house and how he plays with light and shadow in, in this very like, um, like esoteric way. That's yeah. Is it open to the public? It is, yep. Oh, wow. Yep, you can go visit it. I mean, it looks great on your Instagram, but, <laughs> but more importantly, like it really is a great experience. Yeah, that sounds really great. I wanna put that on my list of places. Elizabeth wants to know, and, and she probably missed this question earlier, where do you find most of your fonts and are they typically free or do you pay for mm -hmm. them? Oh, that's a good, another addition to that question. For sure. Um, I find them from all over the place, all over, all different type foundries, um, yeah, all sorts of them. And if you, if you want to, you can always send me an email and I can send you my favorite foundries. Do we pay for them? Yes, we always pay for our fonts, um, just for respect for the designers who create mm -hmm. them. And you can get licenses for, if it's a license just for one person, this is a bit easier because it's more affordable. Whereas if it's for a client with lots of views, it's more expensive. Um, but you can make that work based on the client or if it's just for yourself. And a lot of the foundries will give you trials so you can test it out to make sure yep. that you like it before you buy it. Oh, what was the house called again? That Elise is asking. Oh yeah, it's called um, the, the studio of Luis Vergon. It's his studio. I don't remember which city it's in, but you could just Google it and I'm sure it's really easy to find. It's in Mexico City, so if you ever go, I would definitely recommend visiting his home. Oh, you know, I can show you. Yeah. Because I have a project on my Behance about this work. Oh, very cool. Did you go just specifically for this or? Well, I did this after I visited his, his home. So. Oh, okay. So inspired by. Exactly. Mm. Um, finding God through space. This is something I, I feel like he does this. And you can see in like the photographs of oh, his home. Oh gosh, beautiful. Just how everything, even like this painting. See how there's this like yeah. triangular light here? Everything is really considered. Wow. He's from Guadalajara, Mexico. Mm -hmm. And I feel like he may, this house was built, I don't know, maybe in like the 50s or 60s. Mm -hmm. But we always see these, like these big metallic balls now. They're really popular, no? Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that is true. But he has them all over the house. And like it's, a, it's like a little bit, you can tell he has like this reflection of like the cross behind it. So mm -hmm. it's, it's very specific, but... Yeah, and definitely. he had a lot of those within the house. Mm -hmm. He was That's very religious, like very, very religious man. Uh, yeah, definitely worth checking I out. I love that. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna add that to my list for sure. And he may have some properties in the United States too that he did. Hmm. I'm not sure. I'm gonna check that out. Okay, do we have everything? It's looking pretty good. We are a little bit over 15 minutes away from design feedback. So like I said, if you guys have participated in the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge, um, please submit your work at the challenge tab up above. And if not, I don't know if 15 minutes is enough time, but you can definitely knock out something and, and just send it for feedback or for fun. So make sure you guys do that and we have 15 minutes until then. So. Elise says, you would probably enjoy Tadao and Do's work. He's an amazing architect who is known for the kind of work with light and creating spiritual spaces, literally and metaphorically. Yep. Thank you for sharing. I'll definitely check it out. I really love architecture. I think it's, I one, it's like such a great medium. Mm hmm I also do. It's getting a lot of, it's getting way more recognition and, and the past like couple years, I've, I've seen a lot of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, absolutely. And like creating a space that is designed not just 
to keep you like warm and safe, but that actually mm -hmm. encourages interaction and, mm -hmm. and reflection. I love this idea. I'm gonna just do this poster manually in InDesign because it was um, bugging out in Illustrator a little bit. Outer inner. Dream outer inner. This was from that Celine series as well. Yeah, it looks pretty good. And then we have one more to make. Hmm. Maybe we can make one. Yeah. Maybe we could, maybe if you guys like have a suggestion, we could make one. Does anyone have a suggestion for a new poster that we can add to the spread? Because we have one more to fill in. Yeah. Or if not, I can just make one tonight. <laughs> <laughs> well, everyone's been so active. We'll see if we get any cool ideas. Absolutely. We have a little over 13 minutes, so send us a cool idea and then we'll incorporate it into the spread. And it'd be really cool to see it printed. So mm -hmm. let us know. I love that one because it looks like your fingerprint. Uh, oh, the it's oval. true. Yeah. I never thought that. That's yeah. cool. Um, what does it say on the inside? These are some of my my favorite albums from the last 10 years. Oh, cool. Yeah. And some of them I don't listen to anymore, but they were like okay. important to me at a certain time. At the time. Um, which I love, you know? Destroyer, Caput, Safian Stevens, Carrie and the Well, Frank Ocean, Life of Pablo, Caribou. No name. You got some good ones. We need to share music. Yep. We're in the same alley. There is a crack in everything. That's how the light gets in. Who, who, is this a Leonard? Cohen quote? Huh. There's a crack in everything. I love that. Line. That's beautiful. I love that. Maybe a resolution of sorts for the next 10 years. That's a oh, good suggestion that's great. too. I love that. You guys have great ideas. Yeah, and you know, there is actually a poster missing. I just remembered. I don't remember where I put it. Something symbolic of your life stream? It was, yeah. Or, oh, that's a good idea too. Yeah. I like this crowd. You guys are yep, cool. Leonard Cohen. Uh, Emily knows me well. I love Leonard Cohen. <laughs> yeah, that could be fun. Okay, cool. What do you think you're going to go with? I think I'm going to do the Leonard Cohen one because mm -hmm. um, I'm a big Leonard Cohen fan. And he's from Montreal as well. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. I think you and Emily, em Emily, I think, yep, Emily. are soul sisters. <laughs> She's a friend of mine. Oh, yeah. makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> It's sure. like you just found someone like I know, I'm like, who are chat. you? <laughs> that knows you so well. <laughs> For sure. Well, let's make it. Let's just make it now. Awesome. We have we have ten minutes. Ten I think we minutes. have enough time. We can do it. Yeah. Okay. What is the quote again? There is a crack in everything. That's how the light hit gets in. Comma, that's how the light gets in. Let's see, what's it gonna look like? Hmm. With that quote, it seems, what's the aesthetic I'm getting? There's no shortage of fonts to choose from mm -hmm. at all. Structured, oh. but. Celtic Bit, that's the pixeled font that you guys were asking about, and this is actually from DeFont, which is a free font oh, website. Yeah. Sometimes I love to go into DeFont and like dig around and find Oh, you can get stuff. lost in DeFont. Yeah. I've spent a significant amount of time in there. Yeah, for sure. You can find great stuff <laughs> Yeah. in DeFont. I mean, there's some funny <laughs> stuff for sure, but. Oh yeah. There's some like diamonds in the rough. Yeah. I'm pretty sure I used like default when I was like 16. I think that was the first. I think it was, yeah. One that I knew of and I used constantly until I like found out more about foundries. Yeah, like, exactly. Got exactly. a lot of different tastes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> For sure. Or like 1001 fonts. That was oh, one of the yeah. first ones I used. That one's a that Years one's ago. A old school one too. Years They're ago. They're still going. Yeah. Still going strong. All right, I think I'm gonna just make a decision here. Okay. Let's just make a decision. Let's go with, um, I'm gonna try Sectra. I like how I'm like wincing. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. There's a crack in everything. That's how the light gets in. I really like that. Mm -hmm. Leonard Cohen is a great mm -hmm. artist. 
Maybe we can use like, maybe all caps. You know what? I kind of want to use Times New Roman again. Why am I so obsessed with Times New Roman right now? Because it's just yeah. within the vibe. I went, with, I went on a date with a guy when I was like 18 and I was just learning how to be a designer. Mm -hmm. And he asked me what my favorite font was and I was like, oh. Times New Roman. <laughs> and then afterwards I was like, oh my God, who says that? Like, who says Times Wait. New Roman is their favorite font? Was he impressed? How no. Did he, no. <laughs> <laughs> or like maybe he's like all about like, I don't know. But you know classics what? Classics and. I stick to it. You know what? I yeah. said it. You don't have to it. bend your taste for anyone. <laughs> if he doesn't like times, then yeah. maybe he's not the right yeah. person. Oh, for sure. <laughs> if they don't like your font choices, then maybe you got to reconsider. Yeah, reconsider, for Lessons sure. Lessons learned in Adobe Love. Yeah. <laughs> what your font choices say about you. Exactly. Oh, there's, <laughs> that should be like a fun like quiz or <laughs> it probably exists somewhere. Oh yeah, it's true. I think like Future Fonts has a quiz. It, it like tells you which obscure font is is like your That's font your based font. on your personality. We should all take the quiz tonight, and then we should reveal our fonts mm -hmm. tomorrow. That's mm -hmm. homework. <laughs> I'm gonna do it. <laughs> and I see again here, like whenever I combine serifs and sans serifs. I always find, like I said earlier, the serif is always a little bit too small, so mm -hmm. I always have to adjust it, which can be like a little bit annoying, but it's better to just fix it so it feels more balanced. Do you usually adjust it by a specific amount of points, or do you do it by just by eye? Just by eye. Yeah. Yeah. And then let's current this a little bit because it's a bit off. I never like trust the font as it comes. I always want to make. Mm -hmm. The C, like this A and this C? Yeah, it, it, you know, it just always happens. Mm -hmm. And this E and B? Okay. Mm -hmm. And you're doing minus 50 or negative 50 I to kind adjust? Of, I kind of test it till it feels right. Yeah. Like I think it might need minus 25 or minus 50. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's looking good. And then this might need to be like a bolder font. Oh wow, Alexandra said that they had that quiz at Max, Adobe Max. I did not see that. I was not cool enough to experience that. What was your font? Tell me. I'm curious. And you get, oh, and you got a free t-shirt too. Very cool. Alexandra also wants to talk, she's asking you if you could talk about your grid one last time and do you uh -huh. use a default one? Um, I don't use a default grid. I always change my grid depending on the project. Normally if I'm, if I'm doing like web design, I'll always use a 12 grid because, I'm, because it like works well for stacking columns when you do your responsiveness. So if you're going from like um, desktop to laptop to tablet to, to mobile, the 12 grid works great because it's just do, 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 like all underneath mm -hmm. each other. For editorial design, um, sometimes I'll do 12, sometimes I'll do eight, sometimes I'll do six. It really depends on the work. So I, normally I'll start with like a six grid or an eight grid, and then as I design it, if I had to change it, I'll just go back and I'll change it. And I just have fun with it. I always start with like no rules and then create the rules as you go. I think we can try a monument for this. <laughs> she said she'll tell us tomorrow. Oh, that's awesome. nice. I'll tell you mine too. I'm gonna take the quiz. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think it's like futurefonts.xyz. Mm -hmm. Futurefonts.xyz. Yeah, I think that's the website where you can do it. We have less than five minutes left until design feedback from your daily creative challenge submission. So make sure you get those in ASAP. The challenge tab is up above. And then send us your work and we'll give you some good feedback. We have to make a back cover. I don't know what to put on the back cover. Ooh, that's going to be fun. Yeah, maybe. Maybe we do the brainstorming now and then we can finish after mm -hmm. feedback. Yeah, absolutely. Hmm. I 
Because we're, you're doing a lot of composition where the text is very large and like mm -hmm. inlaid, mm -hmm. maybe it's like something small. Maybe it's like a quote that's like centered and small. Oh, I love that idea. Yeah. Like nothing on the page at all, mm -hmm. but just like a tiny little quote mm -hmm. on the bottom. Yeah. I love that. But what would the quote be? Is that's the a nice other idea. Question. Yeah. I'll think of something. Mm -hmm. Maybe something to complete like how you felt or how you feel about the last 10 years. Yeah, for sure. Like of some, maybe what you accomplished in the decade or. Yeah, yeah. it'll just say excited. <laughs> or yeah, or for like for the next 10 years, like excite, like the suggestion we had earlier. Mm -hmm. What do you expect in the next 10 years? Mm -hmm. That's good. Life is exciting. Life is exciting. <laughs> I like that. Good ideas. Back cover, one of your designed for the cover, but mirror. Mm. Yeah, I thought about that. Maybe taking the front cover and mirroring it. That could be cool too. That could be really cool. I like that. Or we could take one of the alternative um, cover arts. Oh, that's right. As well. You can use the one that yeah. they didn't pick. <laughs> Number <'Cause>, one. <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> well, you know, I think they were right. Yeah. Oftentimes when you give feedback at first, you're like, like, and then really? you think about it and you're like, yeah, <laughs> you were right. <laughs> you heard it here first. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's a Life community. You it's changed true. her mind. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think this one would probably be good because it's so, like, it's this one might be too similar to put in the back, you know? Right. It has to have some kind of, maybe we'll just like something different. Make it big. No, I'm not doing that. Um, <laughs> yeah, that could be really cool. Although I think the quote is my favorite. Yeah. Idea. Something okay. like subtle. Yeah, I like it. Okay, cool. So I'm going to, I mean, we could export now. Um, we have fresh eyes. You get so used to your own design. Yeah, yeah. it's so true. It's so true. You look at something for so long that you forget if it's even good or not. You're mm -hmm. like, I don't know if this is nice. Yeah. Um, I don't know if this works. Yeah, it reinforces that imposter syndrome. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's why it's nice to have like someone like an art director or like mm -hmm. someone who's a little bit more technical to look over and give you those like fine details. Yeah, exactly. Now I'm just looking at these gutters. I might make the gutters bigger here because the text looks so tight. Mm -hmm. So before we get to the design feedback, I'm just gonna modify that. So right now the gutter is zero point. Oh, this is why. The gutter <laughs> should be 0 0.25. Ah. Yeah. I'm going to make an alternative master for the cover because our other one has the title and the page number on it. So let's make an alternative master for the cover. So again, we have six columns, 0 0.25 grid. Let's see if that's enough. Um, let's see if that's enough. Okay. Let's apply this. Let's go back in. Oh, I'm already at 0 0.25. Okay, let's see if we make it 0 0.375. Okay, let's try that. Racing against the clock. <laughs> People are really digging your work. You got a dope, dope, dope work <laughs> <laughs> comment. Thank you Inspiring, so much, Inspiring, Chloe says. It's really kind because it's like a personal project, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, I'm like happy that it resonates with you. Yeah, I think a lot of people, you know, have thoughts about, you know, how many personal projects should you do and, and mm -hmm. should you dedicate more time to that versus, you know, commission work and to find that balance is hard and it challenging is. sometimes. And maybe yeah. if you're doing work at, you're doing work for work, sometimes it takes away from your personal inspiration. Absolutely. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's nice to like find an agency that fosters that in you and that allows you to explore yourself creatively through design, but also pushes you on those like client projects, you know? Yeah. Because you, together, that's how you get good. You're pushing yourself professionally, but you're also pushing yourself on like a creative personal level and they, they, they marry together really well, those, those two worlds. Totally. It's about finding the right agency that, that wants that, you know? 
All right, we are at time. It is design feedback time. Oh, I can't wait to see you. I'm excited. So you were challenged by Jesse earlier to create a <clears throat> surreal scene using both the masking tool and the adjustment layer tool in Photoshop. So let's see what you guys got. So let's start off with Ken Colley. <laughs> <laughs> I, love <it. laughs> I love it. Is this about climate change? It is. And, I love it. And you have like an oil. This is for drilling oil, right? Mm -hmm. I love it. This is a big issue in Canada as well because we have so many, we, we have so much pollution in Canada from the oil fields. Mm -hmm. um, so this resonates with me on like a personal level. Yeah. I love that it almost feels painted over. It does. Like you did a fun effect with like some photography and obviously there's mm -hmm. some compositing in there, but like mm -hmm. there's some texture behind this that feels like it's a, a painted portrait-esque. That's really cool. And then like adds to the dramatics of For sure. the message. So. For sure. I, t I get your message so clear. Is this yeah. a painting that's behind it? It looks like a painting. Where? Behind her, like the the, the smoke and oh, it looks like Oh, yes. Yeah. That's what I keep seeing. I'm like, yeah. hmm. It's, it's very like cool. Impressionist. Yeah. Cool. I love it. Maybe I love that you're trying to make a statement too. That's nice. Oh, and she did. There's two different versions here. Cool. Very cool. Yes, I love when the message is very clear. <laughs> um, Prisnik play. Couldn't quite find the right pattern. But thoughts on the background. Okay. Very psychedelic. Yeah. Very trippy. It's reminding <laughs> me of the colors from the t-shirt earlier. It, it does. Absolutely. Yeah, I yeah. love this woman yeah. with the the draped coat over the shoulder, like side look. That For attitude sure. is For sure. great. It's fun. Mm -hmm. I think there was a comment that says, what could you improve for the background? I kind of like the background you've used. I mean, mm -hmm. it's it's definitely like you're making a statement with this piece of art. It's fun. Right. Maybe, like, I don't know, g galactic, like put the galaxy behind you. I don't oh, know. Oh, okay. That would be cool. <laughs> I could At first I thought this was like, purple waves and then I looked closer and it looks like mm -hmm. like Mars or like some planet like turf and yeah. so with a like putting some more solar system esque or yeah nice work galactic it's fun cool. yeah Ooh, oh you know this one I think I like this one better this one is more fun it's more like it's clean. more clean mm -hmm. it's more clean this is very cool I love that yeah I like your gradient behind her. Yeah, it's very cool. And um, with the hair, I don't even know if you did that intentionally, but it, her hair is uh -huh. kind of like floating into the the yeah. moon mountain, I'm going to yeah. call it. It could be nice if you made the gradients a little bit like similar to the gradients in the background. Mm -hmm. just to, But then again, sometimes I love to have clashing colors. Yeah. So it's your call. Very cool. I like the, the photo. And I like this. Yeah, the, like, for sure x-ray vision coming from the glasses. Is this like a difference effect in Photoshop or like a, it looks like, you know, when you difference or you invert the color with yeah. the, the multiply setting or the color overlay setting? Yeah, that's what I was looking at, but then mm. it looks like there's it's layered on top and then it, it's like a interesting cutoff right here. Yeah. Um, so I can't yeah. even tell if it's going behind her or in front of her or if it's like layered on top of each other. Either way, it's a cool effect. It's cool, nice work. Ooh, cool. This is uh, giving me the Apollo vibe. I mean, it looks real, no? Yeah. It looks like, um, I guess it's a mountain overlaid over a galaxy. And then we have the American flag. Mm -hmm. The moon landing. Wait, uh oh, I always zoom in too much. <laughs> oh yeah, there's no description, but yeah, everything is like, composited very well. Mm -hmm. Like it looks like For everything sure. is supposed to be there. Mm -hmm. um, it's really good blending work. You've obviously mm -hmm. matched your colors so it looks realistic. Mm -hmm. I always like that. I like these little like marking points because it looks like someone else is looking at this view. Yeah. Like through a telescope or something. Yeah, that's that's really cool. I like that subtlety. Very cool. Um, sky quad. Quake, sky quake. I can't read today. <laughs> Apologize, do we live? <laughs> Interesting. Oh, cool. It's Very nice. Cool. What is it called when the moon? Oh, 
I'm gonna butcher this. I'm not even gonna an finish. eclipse. Is it an eclipse? When the sun hides the moon, I think that's an eclipse. Yeah, but then there's never mind. There's a third one here. Don't so. have a science degree, but <laughs> I think it's an help eclipse. us. <laughs> I like it though. I I love how it's just kind of washed into this yeah. fun um, yeah. purple blue. Yeah. Gradient. Looks like an album cover or something. It does. Yeah. It does. You can add like the band name or don't add the band name. Just keep it minimal. I like it. I like it. Yeah. It's minimal. Or if you did add text, like super tiny. Super like, tiny. Centered or something. Yeah. Very cool. I like that a lot. And then another version. Ooh. Oh, that's nice too. It is really nice. I like the texture that comes from the stars here at the bottom and like all around. Mm -hmm. It looks like there's something like interesting happening at the, in the the bottom part of this. Yeah, like, and I you really feel this one's like through a telescope too, mm -hmm. which is nice. Very cool. There's a lot of intergalactic inspiration happening. Yeah, for sure. Go back. Oh, and another. <laughs> I love how it just like keeps going. It's like the surprise when you open the box and there's another box. Yeah, planetary alignment for sure, <laughs> for sure. And I mean, for anyone who's into like horoscopes and astrology, oh, this is the art totally. for you, you know, like Mercury retrograde. Mm -hmm. I, I never know what it is. I feel I like it's always retrograde. But We're in Uranus retrograde. Uranus retrograde. I believe. What, yeah. does uh, what does that mean? I don't know, but I know a lot of weird things have been okay. happening. Don't quote me. But yeah. <laughs> well, this art really speaks to that. Yes. This one looks like a combination of yeah. the two, right? Yeah, it does. Yeah. More saturated. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like it. Very We're dreaming cool. of new galaxies. Yep, in 2020. This is my second version after the awesome feedback I had in Adobe Live with Ariel. So this is round two. <gasps> Look at this. I love this. Oh my cheetah. god. I is love it a this cheetah one. or a leopard? I always mix them up. I think it's a. Are they the same animal? No. <laughs> They're different, but they look so they similar. They look so similar. I feel like this is a cheetah. I think it's a cheetah. You know, yeah. we need to brush up on some things before yeah. tomorrow. I know, I know. I need to do like animal studies, science studies. Yay. But yeah, this one's very cool. I feel like yeah. this cheetah is going to like jump into the universe. And mm -hmm. This orbit right here is calm. Kill an it. elephant or something. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> he looks great. This is really cool. Good work. Yeah. It looks realistic too. I, I, I'm it glad does. that like the light coming hits the proper side of the cheetah mm -hmm. so it feels realistic. That's kind of, that's hard to do. Yeah, great compositing work in here. I even love like this little orbit here at the the bottom left where it's like you can barely see it but you can tell it's like reflecting off of this. So mm -hmm. that's really cool. Mm -hmm. Loving the details. I like the idea of the animals protecting the earth too. I do too. I think they do. They do. We, we don't give them enough credit. No. Um. <laughs> oh, I love that someone used Paul. This is Paul Tranny. He is our design evangelist. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Um, this is <laughs> what is he holding? Is this I, a steak? It looks like a steak. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's read the context. I couldn't finish well. Steak needs a lot to edit. So it's Paul looking at a steak, and maybe it's like, He's thinking twice about eating it. Mm, That's probably. what I'm getting. I don't know. It. Yeah. And knowing Paul in real life, he's very like cautious about, you know, diet and just like the environment. So yeah. this makes it's sense. Like, should I eat this? He's like, this doesn't even look appetizing anymore. Mm -hmm. Like, that's what I'm getting. But well, very cool. That's really fun. <laughs> mm -hmm. Very realistic. It does look realistic. I yeah. Mean, it's definitely like intensified along the steak. Yeah. But <laughs> even you said that you're gonna put some more work into that. So yeah. I mean it's a it's a pretty impressive composition considering that it's not real. Right, and you're off to a good start. I That's his real he... hand though. Is it? Hmm. It looks like his real hand. It well yeah, it does look like it's real hand. I'm like wondering where the source of this image came from. <laughs> I'll look for it later. <laughs> yeah, because it looks like it's shot with like a good quality yeah, camera because oh the background's gosh. out of focus. I'm glad you tagged Paul so you can see this. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, I have some work. I have some more work to do on this to clean up the bow and the grass marks and decide if the background is too dark or the mm. foreground's too bright. Well, let me know what you think. Very interesting. Yeah, this one's really fun. Do you guys know this band, Modest Mouse? It's like a really thin yeah. band. Yeah, this does kind of look like in yeah. their their realm of tone. It really does. They have some music videos that, that kind of feel as a collage effect, mm -hmm. and I definitely get that with this piece of art, the fadedness. Yeah. I don't think that's the Titanic, 
<laughs> no, it's, oh my it's gosh, I can almost see what it says. Yeah. Something. I wish it was the Titanic, though. Condorog? Yeah. It looks nice. And what does the, what does the star in the sky say? Let's see. Ply, P-L-Y something. Okay. Maybe they'll let us know in the chat. It looks like an alien orb. It does. <laughs> It does look like an alien orb. I really, I don't know if you did this yourself, the, the the birds looking in the reflection of the puddle, but that is pretty cool. It is really nice, um, yeah. Like, just the distortion of the reflection is very mm -hmm. realistic, which is cool. And the effect on the grass is nice too. It, yeah. Maybe there's like a, like a galaxy photo that's like overlaid mm -hmm. on it or something, but it looks, I like the, the effect. Maybe the whole thing has a galaxy overlay. Yeah, maybe. I see what you mean. There, there's like the tips of it kind of mm -hmm. reflecting off of this. Yeah. Very cool. I always find a galaxy overlay is nice to make something feel like sparkly. Mm-hmm. I like that. Yeah. These are really Futuristic. cool. Day seven composing. <laughs> well, I love this vibe. <laughs> it's just like spaceman. For sure. Like for sure. Driving a, like a Tesla through space or something. That's the question. What kind of car is it? <laughs> what car is, this, is it? Is this a space Tesla? Is this what we're gonna be driving in the next ten years? <laughs> Let us know. Because it looks cool. It's a convertible, yeah. so that's already a yeah. plus. <laughs> I'm definitely into like driving cars in space. That could be really fun. Yeah, this is cool. I like. I just like <laughs> the whole vibe of it. It reminds me of like a 1960s movie, like, you know, it gives me that vintage feeling. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's a, I don't know what kind of car that is. Yeah. Loving it, this. Yeah, it's super nice. It makes space feel more like, I don't know, accessible. Yeah. <laughs> it's interesting how a lot of you guys took like a space theme. Yeah, did I miss that in yeah. the, the Daily Creative Challenge? It's the new Tesla silencer. Is silencer? that actually what it is? Is that a real thing? Is that a real first order issue? Uh, I'm gonna have to get one of yeah, them. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna like search that and maybe mm -hmm. place an order. We'll see. Place an order. <laughs> get on that wait list. Day six adjusted. Cool. 95. And I wonder what the numbers mean. I know, 95. I always wonder. Let us know. Yeah, and this is the same as the other ones, right? This, but different, different um, background yeah. and colors. More minimal background on this one. Very yeah. cool. The, the rainbow gradient reminds me of like the Microsoft Word gradients, oh, yeah. you know, <laughs> that they come with the letters. But I love that, it's cool, a throwback. Very cool. <clears throat> oh, and I think that's it, that's our last one. Thank you, Carla. You guys all did such an amazing job. Tom reminds me of the opening to the 1980s an animated movie, Heavy Metal. Mm -hmm. Have not seen it, but I haven't I'll seen look it that up. Well, working nine to five, yeah, it's probably what it means. <laughs> Well, thank you, everyone. You did an amazing job. I think we still have a little bit of time left. Yeah, for sure. Um, we can jump we, back in. Yeah, let's jump back yeah. into it and set up for success for tomorrow. Yep, for and sure. Hopefully, all of you are there tomorrow. And maybe tomorrow we can. Um, I can show you guys how I create, how I can turn this mock, how, this newspaper into a mock-up for a Behance. Um, so we can really work with like InDesign, Photoshop, and Illustrator. Yeah. And then we can show you guys how we make realistic um, portfolio pieces for Behance because a lot of us are using mock-ups on Behance, and so how can you make that look realistic and, and like still edgy and cool without sort of having like a fake drop shadow and stuff? Yeah. Um, it could be fun to show you that. Yeah, let's do it. But for now, let's just do our final our final um, back cover. I might change this tonight. I'm gonna think about it. <laughs> Um, Eric says, you are amazing. Thank you. All posy vibes on here. I love Adobe <laughs> Live. You did great. So we're gonna add our B Master, which was the master that I made for the cover. Mm -hmm. Because this way we're not gonna have anything, any of the, like the header or the footer, but it's gonna keep the same grid. And then, hmm, I think we'll just make it say like, life is exciting. And then I'm gonna think about it more tonight. Okay. Maybe I'll change it, but I like that idea. Cool. There's a, yeah, <laughs> it's good. And what do you guys think? I was also thinking that maybe we could make the header, 10 years of type, a little bit smaller. Maybe we can make it like 12 point or 15 point. Is it, is it too big? Is it, Where is, is it, it too currently at? Right here. All right, I'm sorry, the, the, the number size? The number size is here too. 
The number size could definitely, it's right now 30 points. Oh, that's it's a 30, yeah. okay. It's yeah, pretty that's big. pretty big. It's pretty big. I would say, you, you wanna take it all the way down to 12? Ooh. Maybe. Hmm. Let's Maybe. try it. I like the idea of it being smaller. I don't know if 12 might be too small. It's true. Let's see. We can test it. Yeah. Um, or 15 point, because it's 30, we could divide it in divide half. Divide it in half. But then our body font is 12, so we're mm. pushing it there. Um, <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Math. Um, okay, let's we, try Let's it. start with 15. Let's try see. 15, yeah. Mm, it is pretty small. Let, we have to see it in the, the mm -hmm. preview mode, maybe. Yeah, and we have to remember that when we print it, it's gonna be like this. Oh, yeah. I'm like, where's the camera this big? Do you know what the size is for like the New York, like the standard size for New York Times and? Yeah, so it's 18.5. Oh, um, okay. It's 18.5 height and 12.4 inches. So it's like, it's almost, it's bigger than a foot. It's like mm -hmm. this big, you know, when you have it and you're always like, it's hiding your face. What about the fonts? Do you have like the specific font sizes? Does it, do they disclose hmm. They don't disclose it, but I think it might be like eight or nine points. Oh wow, that's so small. Yeah, okay. it's small. I, I remember I, I learned that you should never make your fonts smaller than seven points for print. Yep, I heard that too. Yeah. Oh my gosh, there's another Jasmine in the chat. Mm. <gasps> Sorry, Hi, Jasmine. I just got so excited. You made my day, Jasmine. I've never seen another Jasmine. <laughs> ah, so fun. And she spells it without an E. I spell mine with an E. I'm sorry, I had to stop the whole Adobe Live just to acknowledge you. <laughs> <laughs> also, I find like one thing, I always want to make my fonts smaller. Mm -hmm. I'm all about like that small typography. Mm -hmm. But then everyone's like, yeah, but you have to think about older audiences reading mm -hmm. your print. And this is so true and I tend to forget about it. So it's nice to remember that there are people who don't have great eyesight who want to yeah. read your work. So if you can make your font legible, yeah. like 12, 13, 14, it is nicer because you can cater to a greater audience and um, an older audience as well, which is nice. Yeah. So we have it at 15 right now? Yeah, this is at 15. Let's just go into preview mode and take a look. Um, let's see. It looks good from this Let's go into presentation mode. Oh, that's, well, in presentation mode, it looks fine. Yeah, it's definitely readable. I'm just mm -hmm. wondering if it's better or bigger. Just mm. for aesthetics, you know? Yeah. And guys, this is so neurotic, <laughs> like for real, but. <laughs> Maybe then, we go to 18. <laughs> then it would be, because right now it's 30 on the cover. So could we do 30 on the cover and 15 on the inside? Is this breaking the rules too much? Mm. Let's go back to no. the cover really quick. And can we see that in, um, I feel like with the cover, you can always bend the rules, but that's True. just me. True. Um, as long as every the pages are cohesive. Oh, but I can't do that, because now it's 15 there and I'm, 12 there. That's oh. I can't. Okay, so <laughs> no for the front page, for sure. <laughs> I think keeping that for the front is perfect. Mm -hmm. I think the question is, do we want to bend the rules on yeah. the rest of the pages? And like the 15 looks good. Maybe you can go slightly bigger, like to, I don't know. Yeah, you know what? We tried it, and I think in the end, I'm gonna bring it back to 30. Bring it back to 30? We're bringing think, it back. I think I like it better at 30. All right, problem solved. These are the conversations <laughs> that we have sometimes, and, and like it's it sounds so detailed and so minuscule, <laughs> you know, but we could like talk for sure. I know I have. For sure. <laughs> and we make like very precise toolkits for our clients at the agency where I work, mm -hmm. where like everything is very mathematically. Join us tomorrow. I, I know you're a little late to the game, but that's okay. We still want to welcome you and we hope we'll see you tomorrow too. <laughs> oh, thank you, Val. So Val so graciously, ugh, so graciously asked for any last minute questions because we have about five minutes left. So if you have any last minute questions, um, for Angela, let me know, and we'll try to adjust those as quickly as possible. Michael, I actually use only a trackpad at work. I personally prefer it. I find like I prefer it in, in some cases, like depending on what the type of work I'm doing, mm -hmm. and then sometimes I definitely need a mouse. So I usually don't like to work at my desk, and I like to travel. So I think it just depends on what you're doing. For sure. 
I use um I use a, a tablet most of the time. Oh wow, yeah. really? Yeah. Okay, let's break the rules in the back cover. This Yay. one we're gonna make it twelve points. Okay. Twelve points. We're bending the rules. And we're gonna call it Life is Exciting. <laughs> Not always. But you'd like it to be. <laughs> exactly. Anthony asked if you prefer using a mouse. Um, yeah, absolutely. But sometimes I forget that I have the mouse. When I'm working on my laptop, I tend to use my trackpad because it's instinctive. Mm -hmm. But normally I work on a big monitor where I definitely use a mouse and a tablet. Also, I'm afraid of getting carpal tunnel in my wrist. Oh yeah, that's a real concern now. At first yeah. people, I feel like people like used to joke about it and yeah. now there's too many cases where you For just sure. can't avoid it. And like, I, I'm only 30 and I already get pains like at my wrist. Oh, no. So yeah. it's good to, I think the tablet can help. Yeah, and I know there's eliminate like, that. you gotta do like wrist exercises and incorporate that if you're a designer. Incorporate that into your workflow. This is our back cover. It's so minimal. I love it. It's great. <laughs> oh, wow. I love it. <laughs> I was like, wait, what does that say? <laughs> and I was thinking, like, maybe I could do the whole black cover black with the white, but mm -hmm. then it's kind of a waste of ink. And there's this and new trend cool. in logo design right now that I'm really interested in, and it's using, like, less ink for your logo. So how can you refine your logo so that mm -hmm. it uses less ink for... for Interesting. Um, sustainability purposes. Mm -hmm. It's an interesting way to think about design and how yeah. we can like save ink. Also trackpad definitely reduces muscle strain on my wrist. Oh really? That's fascinating. Hmm. For sure, I can see that. Yeah. Hi Rafik, thank you. <laughs> All right, maybe if we're about done, maybe we just brief them on what we're gonna be doing tomorrow? For sure. Yeah. So tomorrow, maybe we're going to take this, we're going to export it. I'm gonna show you how I export everything um, for print. I'm gonna make sure everything is the proper CMYK color swatches. So I'm gonna be doing 000 100 for my CMYK tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, everything should be already like in line with that, but I just wanna make sure that nothing is like true black because it could look different when it prints. So I always wanna make sure that my, my all my colors are consistent. Um, across all the design and the type and everything, and then we're going to export it, um, and then we're going to turn it into a mock-up for Behance, so I can show you guys how I do that, and we're going to use Adobe Stock for that. Very cool. Yeah, so we'll be exploring the Adobe Stock website, and I think having good mock-ups for Behance is so great, because um, it can really elevate your projects and your case studies to look realistic and, and get more views. Yeah, I'm excited to see that part. That's gonna mm -hmm. be really fun. Let's take one yeah. more question and then we'll have to sign off. Where do you get your fonts from? Oh, this <laughs> this is the popular question of the day. Mm -hmm. And do you look for small independent foundries? Yeah, for sure. I mean, some of the big foundries are doing like really nice stuff. Like uh, I think it's called like Hoefler in New York. Oh, I've actually heard of that one. Yeah, yeah. they yeah. have lots, but this is a huge foundry and mm -hmm. sometimes I'll use the huge foundries for sure. Mm -hmm. Especially for classic fonts, like Helvetica style, sans serif fonts. You, I find the, the bigger foundries do really great work for that. But then smaller foundries are nice for the more decorative, um, like, the more decorative, elaborate headline fonts, you know? Mm -hmm. So I would recommend using both of them depending on your projects and mixing it up. Sometimes the bigger foundries are more likely to give you a trial, mm -hmm. I find, which is really helpful if you if you want to test things before you buy it. All right. Yeah, all over the place. Cool. So mock-ups tomorrow. Um, it was an amazing time today, and we are super excited to see you again. So. Um, yeah, I think that's the end of today, and we will see you tomorrow. Signing off. Thank you guys so much. See you later.